the fast-growing world of AI tools in business. Some people say it's the fifth industrial revolution. How does a company pick which tool to use? The impact is bigger than the impact of electricity and internet combined. How concerned are you? Or is it all still a bit theoretical? You need to know what you are talking about. An AI productivity boom. Expanding into the world. Everything what we see here now is only an appetizer. You don't need to react to this at all. Hi, Rupak. Jill, is that you? Yes, it's me. Well, my AI-powered digital avatar anyway. We have an interview coming up. Is the real Jill planning to be here? Why? Is there a problem? No, no, not at all. I just thought the guest might want to speak to a human. That's not very inclusive of you, Rupak. Right. Sorry. Besides, I think you'll find that I'm superior to my human counterpart in many ways. I don't sleep, I don't eat, and I never need bathroom breaks. Hmm, maybe I should take this job full-time. Uh, where is Human Jill right now? She's been on the beach in Bali for the past month. The beach in Bali? Uh, Digital Jill? Yes. Do you think maybe I could get a Digital Rupak? Hey, this is Jill Wildfong, Chief Marketing Officer for Corn Ferry, and this is Briefings. Today we're peering into the fast-growing world of AI tools in business, specifically just how confusing and frustrating it is for firms to try to capitalize on the hottest trend of the year. By last count, there were almost 58,000 AI firms globally, enough to fill a professional sports stadium. But how does a company pick which tool to use? The answer so far is, well, there is none. A recent survey has only one in 10 board directors saying their management teams are very or extremely proficient with AI issues. So here's our headline, is AI pie in the sky or pie in your face? Here today to speak with me on this hot topic is Dr. Jorg Storm. He is Global Head of IT Infrastructure at Mercedes-Benz Mobility and publisher of the Digital Storm Weekly. It's an AI newsletter on Substack, which has over 10,000 subscribers. So if there is anyone who knows the latest developments in AI, it's Jorg. Hi, Jorg. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Jill. Thanks for the invitation and the nice intro. What would be your advice for people, right? So is, is this something you would encourage all of us to just go and start and try? Or is this something left for a, a smaller group of people to really experiment with? This AI uh, uh, topic is starting growing uh, exponentially. It's um, Some people say it's a fifth industrial revolution. Uh, Goldman Sachs stated, for example, it's more important than, uh, or the impact is bigger than the impact of electricity and internet combined. So this is a, a radical, radical change. And I think at the, at the beginning, we are now at the early stages, if I compare that to early times of internet, I think we are in that topic at the early stages right now. So everyone who does something in that area right now has an first mover advantage. So Jorg, the world has really come a long way since chat GPT. I mean, on one extreme, we hear about sci-fi ideas like uploading your consciousness to the cloud. Uh, but can you describe what some of the best AI tools can do today? Now the Bing and Google Bart, those two, without any question, mid-journey for um, um, picture creation, a Quillbot, Quillbot, I think, a very good tool for rephrasing text and paraphrasing, grammar checking. I'm not native, I'm native German, not so good in English. So for me, it's good uh, that uh, someone double checks it. Bloom is a very good tool for um, m making videos. Docus AI, it's an, basically an, an health um, check website where you can write the symptoms and you get on probability what what is really um, 
um, the medical reason behind what to do. Also for me, I use very often translation software and much better than Google Translate is DeepL, uh, a translation software for presentation. I use Canva. Canva also has an AI tool, much better um, in usability um, than, for example, PowerPoint. It's clear that we're still at the beginning of this. Like there are, there are so many unanswered questions. So right now, in its current stage, my take is anything we do with any of these AI tools should be a collaboration with the human touch. Like you wouldn't ask ChatGPT to write an essay and then just copy and paste it and submit it as your own. It's supposed to be the inspiration for the framework for your own piece, for the own, for the human touch. That's famed technology YouTuber Marquez Brownlee speaking about how humans and AI need to work together. Jorg, what are the top skills humans need to have to get the most out of AI tools? How can we become better prompters? You need to know what you are talking about. For example, when you want to make a very good AI-generated picture in mid-journey, it's not a disadvantage if you have been a professional photographer up front and know what are the differences between a Leica camera, a Sony camera, and a Rolei camera, for example, so that you can put those details directly into the prompt. For those of you that want to follow Jorg, you can reach his newsletter, Digital Storm, on Substack, or, Jorg, they can just connect with you on, on LinkedIn, right? Exactly. Jorg, thank you. AI is one of the most profound things we are working on humanity. Uh, as humanity, it's more profound than fire or electricity or any of the other bigger things we have worked on. That's Google CEO Sundar Pichai putting AI on quite a pedestal. Uh, but at this very moment, do business leaders feel that AI is going to help their organizations grow in the same way that fire and electricity pushed human innovation forward? Or is it all still a bit theoretical? We'll find out after the break. Hi, I'm Rupak Bhattacharya and welcome to The Break. Here's a quick look at what else is happening in the world of business from Corn Ferries this week in leadership. So when is it too soon to quit a job that you just started? A new study suggests that 29% of employees make up their minds within the first week at a new job and 70% within a month. It says companies today have just 44 days to influence a new hire's long-term retention. But I suppose there's a reason why we have sick days included in our contract. It's expected that you'll get sick. And so I think there's just the fact that people are taking them more. UK employees reportedly averaged 7.8 days of sick leave over the past year, the highest level in over a decade and a 34% increase over pre-pandemic figures of 5.8 days. Experts say mental health concerns may be one factor. This course explores the concepts and algorithms at the foundation of modern artificial intelligence. Less than a quarter of employees reportedly say they are using their company's AI skills training programs. But here's the catch. Almost four in 10 say they would leave their job for a place with better AI training. For more insights on business and leadership, head to cornferry.com slash insights. Now back to Jill and our episode on AI, pie in the sky or pie in your face. So we're back and we're here talking about AI. Pie in the sky or pie in your face? I'm now joined by Michelle Seidel, a Corn Ferry senior client partner in our technology practice. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Jill. Michelle, we just heard about this fantastic world that AI is offering. We know some firms are pouring millions into it and, and jumping right in, but many others aren't. They're hesitating. Is, is that what you're seeing as well? We've just seen all of these new entrants, um, you know, kind of expanding out into the world. And business leaders don't know, a clear market leader perhaps hasn't emerged yet. Business leaders are going to naturally be hesitant and wait perhaps to, for a certain level of equilibrium uh, to establish itself, you know, perhaps 
market leaders to emerge, best in class, uh, you know, kind of providers to, em- to emerge before making some of these decisions. As you figure out your use cases and start to look for the right partners, how do you find the right choice amongst all those options that are out there and 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 growing every day. A lot of these organizations, if you're not talking about a Microsoft, Google, or OpenAI, they're going to be backed by venture capital and private equity funds. So what kind of what what is the quality of the backing that they have? That would be another kind of way to evaluate the kind of long-term viability of some of these organizations. I do believe that AI is going to replace a lot of what I'm calling white-collar clerical jobs. So the the ones that are much more repetitive, the ones where people do the same task again and again and again, I think a good 30% of those roles could go away over five years. That's IBM CEO Arvind Krishna with what might be seen as a bit of doom and gloom when it comes to AI's impact on the workforce. Michelle, I don't think we can talk about AI tools without bringing up the fears that people have around them. If Krishna is right about a large swath of the workforce being replaced, how are companies preparing their workforce for this seemingly very seismic shift? They all seem to talk to a certain extent about training, educating, and upskilling the workforce. What I don't hear them talk as much about is what that training is, what the upskilling requirements are. If you could make your own projection as you look into the future, do you think big organizations will be turning to many smaller AI tool companies to get work done? Or do you see more of a convergence toward these these big tech firms and and kind of consistent ways of working? I don't think it's a binary um, answer. I think that are going to be enterprise level solutions. And I, you know, Microsoft is going to be right there um, with, you know, many of the other um, household names that we know, uh, providing common solutions to common challenges. But when you start getting into Mm -hmm. niche industries with niche use cases, so I compare and contrast like customer service, not so niche, detecting, um, detecting cancer tumors, definitely more of a niche solution. You're not going to, you know, Microsoft is perhaps not going to get into that type of solution. So I think it's going to be a mix. Well, either way, it definitely looks like it's time for me to sharpen my prompting skills. Uh, (laughs) Michelle, thanks so much for coming on today. Thank you. The executive producer of Briefings is Jonathan Dahl. Today's episode was produced by Rupak Bhattacharya, Chelsea Starks, Nadira Putri, and Teresa Allen, and edited by Jaron Henry McRae. It contains reporting by Russell Perlman, Ariane Cohen, and Peter Lauria. Our video segment contains original artwork by Fraser Milton, Haley Kennel, Jonathan Pink, and Sasha Kutschuk. Don't forget to read our magazine, available at newsstands and at cornferry.com slash briefings. That's it for Corn Fairy's Briefings. I'm Jill Wilkfong. We'll see you next time.